Climate change. It's a global problem, and it's changing the lives of fishers and farmers working throughout the Pacific. Changing weather and sea conditions, combined with unsustainable management of fisheries, has led to a decline in fish catches in many areas. The increase in air temperature and variations in rainfall patterns is also affecting farmers, as the soil is less able to support crops. The impacts of this are especially being felt in the nation of Timor-Leste. Community members in the coastal districts of Batugade and Ataro are eager to learn how they can adapt farming and fishing methods to protect their future. Community-based adaptation processes, like the ones described in this video, are helping to guide fishers and farmers in protecting their livelihoods against climate change. Firstly, it's important to understand the kinds of fishing and farming activities that the communities are currently using. People in, in coastal communities in Timor Leste and the Solomons, they're highly vulnerable to climate change. They're in extremely exposed positions within the land and seascape. They're reliant predominantly on the natural resource base, which is quite regularly overused and extended beyond its capacity already, without the increasing challenge of a changing climate. Step two, then the researchers worked with the fishers and farmers to identify the impacts that climate change is likely to have on these activities and the adaptations they can undertake in response. They created a vision of what they would like their communities to look like in the future and identified options available to achieve this. <laughs> Step 3. The research team then evaluated the options from a number of perspectives to enable the communities to decide the most beneficial plan of action. Together, we did a participatory evaluation of these adaptations from a social, economic and environmental perspective. At the end of the day, what we're looking for is to empower the community members to be able to make their own decisions long after a project team has left their shores. Step four. Armed with this knowledge, the fishers and farmers are making plans to safeguard a more sustainable future for their communities. The researchers worked with some of the local partnering NGO staff to produce a set of brochures. These provided step-by-step -step instructions on how to conduct the workshops with communities and help them consider the impacts of climate change. The brochures also detailed subsequent activities showing how data can be collected and analyzed to understand how effective each adaptation idea might be. Well, the manual will be very helpful for us to try and learn and uh, apply the methodology, learn from the methodology and try to adapt it again. We would like to continue to use this method because uh, we know that if a community aware of what is happening, it will be sustainable. We're all after the same thing. We're all looking to meet our, our basic needs and to all have the opportunity to realise our, our growth and our potential in life. So adapting to climate change is not just about providing uh, assistance and technologies, it's also about identifying the barriers that inhibit some of the poorest and most marginalised members of coastal communities and actually getting access to technologies and services that they need. So it's about empowering them to be able to have a more equitable share in the benefits that adaptation can provide.